one o'clock by the rise of time here, so we'll call the ordinance meeting of the State Board of Equalization. Seventeen. See, Mr. Pope, did you? Yes, uh, Ms. Burchett. Here. Mr. Gargano. Here. Secretary Harvey. Here. Ms. Mary. Here. Or Mumpower. Here. Vice Chair Fuller. Here. Mr. Okay, we have a quorum present. Uh, first, before we proceed, I want to welcome you. Uh, this member. Also, uh, noted earlier, or effective or realize this football is better. I would say, and I just have to sit me in the back of the lower. Yeah. Well, him being a former Alabama, University of Alabama football star, I figured he just didn't want to come and do it. Well, maybe that was it. <laughs> he chose to move out of state. Things, but at any rate, we wish to recognize for purposes of the minutes that he will be leaving us, and we're sad about that, but wish him the very best. Okay, the next item is review of the minutes for August 8th. Any comments or questions about the minutes? We did have one small update. Ms. Burchett noticed that she was actually physically here. We had WebEx parentheses. Other than that, the meeting minutes are identical to the virgin copy uh, the last week. So that one change, I'll uh, Second. Second. Discussion. Staying done. Uh, all voice by phone. All those in favor, second by mistake. Aye. 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 Number three is with being approval of the updated exemption manual on page 9 41 on materials. Item will be presented by Matthew Childress, Tax Council for Organization. Good afternoon, everybody. I'll be quick as there's really not much to say on this. So this is simply just um, informing you that we've updated our exemption manual, which is available on our public facing website to any assessors or members of the public that want to learn more about how they work. Uh, we recently, as of uh, last year, passed a new bill which changed the revocation process uh, by which properties that were previously exempted vote. Uh, this just updates that manual to make sure it's in line with the uh, new law. Uh, I can explain the process or if you have any questions, if you have Mr. Childress, if you're the attendees present who would like to be heard on this item. Seeing none, let the record reflect that there are none. Uh, any questions or comments from members of the board? Is there a motion to approve the item? Second. I'll second. Second. Seeing no further discussion, uh, all those in favor, click call the roll on this item. After the policy and so. Uh, no, we have a physical quorum of the. Um, we're good. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 No. Item number four is the assessment education program, uh, presented by Brian C. Direct. Good afternoon. Uh, we have a couple of folks that have aimed their, or met the requirements to earn assessment certification. They are uh, Chris Brandon with Hamilton County, and Darren Simmons with Williamson County. They have each the requirements of Tennessee Master Assessor that we bring to you. Any questions or comments from members of the board? Second. Solution Creek Compensation Assessors and Deputy Assessors for That one also is, is, is mine, I believe so. Uh, so in August, we presented to this board a, uh, a 
a listing of all the county employees that had met certification, either TCA or TMA, or earned a CAE. Those calculations contained a mistake for an employee out of um, Shelby County, I believe, Betty Moses. And uh, her payment that we uh, brought before you had been based upon a uh, TMA certification when in fact she had earned a CAE certification, which would have brought her or entitled her to a little higher compensation. So uh, we have, we're bringing that for you for correction to correct the payment to Betty Moses. So plan. So to Tennessee Code annotated section sixty seven dash five dash sixteen oh. Okay, so uh, Madison County, when we presented plans to the board for approval in August, I believe it was, they had at that time elected to do a four year reappraisal cycle that would begin this year and conclude in uh, 2026. The local decision makers, the assessor, mayor, county legislative body, those that make that decision, later determined that they wanted to go on to a five year cycle. Our local staff there, Division of Property Assessments in the Jackson office has worked with the county. We've reviewed their uh, plan. It has met the local, uh, it's, it's been approved at the local level. We see no issues with it and bring it for this board for uh, consideration. Chair, I'll ask if there are any attendees present who'd like to be heard on this item. Seeing none, what is winner with the answer? Just a question, uh, Brian, to the best of your knowledge, can you articulate the reason why they wanted to do that? I don't know that I could articulate it without speculating a little bit. Uh, I don't have the inside information on why they made that decision to switch from a four to a five year cycle. Uh, I don't know if our assistant director, Macy Brower, has any inside information on that. <coughs> Yeah, they felt with the resources that they had in the office that they could better walk through doing some of the reappraisal cycle with that. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments from members? Is there a motion to approve the act? So moved. Second. Seeing no further discussion, all those members in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed, no. You guys have it. The item is adopted. But item number six review and certification of the 2022 annual assessments of public utility common carrier companies. The materials are on pages 48 to 229. Material is yeah, so this item agenda has six subparts. Uh, there are, so there's three discrete actions, or there are two rural actions, one informational item for the board. First is recognition of uh, the Office of Safe Assessed Properties, who's here today as well. Uh, for any changes in the certified assessments, the Office of Cert Certified excuse me, the Office of State Assessed Properties previously submitted their assessment to the State Board of Equalization back in September, and they submitted a, a those changes to those assessments, which need to be adopted by the board or rejected by the board accordingly. Second is consideration of any potential appeals or any other actions or exceptions to those changes. Uh, and third and lastly is the actual final certification as amended by an action 6A. I'll refer over to uh, our uh, Greg Moody with the Office of Safe Assessed Properties. Right? <laughs> Good afternoon, Greg Moody, State of Seth Properties. Uh, we are submitting today with in assessments primarily on needs, and so submitted that back in We would ask for the state and for the European Security. 
attendees present would like to be heard on this item. Questions or comments from members of the board? Is there a motion to approve assessments? Mr. Frank. Is there a second? Second. You know, further discussion, all those members in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. No. Seven. That item is adopted. As the uh, secretary said, item B is a referral of matters requiring a hearing. Correct. Uh, this item is reserved on our agenda item in case we did have any last minute show ups for uh, uh, public use of facilities. Uh, however, we've not received any appeals and no one has appeared today to file any sort of exception or appeal those assessments. This item is for informational purposes only. said the item B is an informational item related to points necessary for information. Item C, the certification, uh, certification for 2020 assessments of public utility. Companies uh, in your materials there on page 51. Both are the updated the certification for you. No, other than maybe I would clarify that this does include the, the assessments submitted by OSAP as amended by the board today during its items today. Ask if there are to comment on this item. Saying that I'd like to recognize that there are motion to approve. Certified the 20 assessments of public submitted by the state assessed property. Second, nothing. Second, discussion by board. Seeing none, all those members in favor of the motion to say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Let's have it. The item is adopted. All right. Um, this is number seven. Is both direct passed on the side. So immediately following this uh, meeting of the State Board of Equalization, our audit committee will meet uh, to review updates from the board presented by myself. We've got no other actions for the board today. Okay. Yeah, comments or other business to come before the board. Good job. Motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor saying about this thing up. Uh, 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 no, that's uh, it. We are adjourned. Thank you very much for your service to the state. Yeah. A strong pros now you comfort so. <laughs> really have some pieces. Let's say past the charts, then, right? All right, see you later. Parents, I'll see you all this.
the department. Call the meeting of the audit committee for a week tomorrow. Okay. There's a yes. Uh, sorry, Ms. Birchett. Call and roll. Oh, uh, yes, I'm here. Secretary uh, Sarah Hargett. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. And um, I think the first item is to review the minutes from the October 13th to approve. I have a motion to approve. Second. Ms. Birchett seconds. Um, all in favor of approval of those minutes, please say aye. 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 Say no. Turning it over to you now for update. Uh, so, our committee is a quick uh, the brief update. One of our operations is our last audit committee in 2021. Uh, so, we've got three main updates here. We continue to work with the Administrative Procedures Division. I think Chuck Bruce and our back co work here will work together on those. So, just providing some updates on that process, kind of what looks like internally in terms of impact or rather. Lack of external impact we've had, which is a good thing, kind of what that means for us. We've got a couple of new staff members since last October. I was just going to highlight we've got um, Mr. Miles Cranell over here. Afternoon. We also have Mr. Matthew Childress, who also has uh, been new with our office, and uh, one of our other employees, Tracy, um, Tracy Jones, who's uh, rejoined our office. So for uh, first is our updates, the uniform approach to appeals, our, our kind of relationship with the Administrative Procedures Division. Some of you may recall the actual the way the board actually conducts that first level of appeal is split between Mr. Hargett's office as well as the Comptroller's office here. For the last two years, some of the mechanisms for hearing those appeals have been really reworked uh, as much as we're continuing to address appeals as we always have been. Uh, but the Sort of the, I've always referred to it as you know, how the sausage is made, how we actually move those appeals forward and through the process has been revamped uh, with, I would like to play minimal impact depending on our external customers. So, external uh, pellets may not notice a big difference, but it's made a big difference in our ability to process things smoothly and uniformly. Uh, so, for instance, for the past, uh, our two agencies have been more blurred, the differences between them have been a little bit more combined. Um, Comptroller's office, we used to support the software and digital resources for the judges. Uh, we would, you know, sort of the responsibilities for scanning and preserving documents included in the record were a little bit more mixed, uh, as well as APD was charged with sorting through appeals and trying to figure out which ones needed to go for the hearings uh, and uh, issuing the hearing notices, much other things. So now we've kind of streamlined and sort of helped define those differences of labor between the two offices. So now here at the Comptroller's office, we manage the sorting of all the pending appeals, uh, kind of which ones are ready to go to a hearing, and they're ready to go to a hearing, we'll then refer it over to the Administrative Procedures Division. Uh, we also process the majority of settlements and withdrawals that come through our office through an expedited process that were approved years ago. Um, I conduct status conferences with the parties to make sure they're all ready to go to a hearing and make sure our resources are being uh, we otherwise also will have begun preparing the notices of hearing and sending those out to the parties via uh, email and hard copy as well as mailed out to them. Make sure everyone has notice of that hearing that we previously scheduled on a call together with me. Uh, and as well as some scheduling orders and some discovery disputes are disposed with uh, in, being in our office as opposed to being, having to be referred to an administrative law judge for sort of help through that process. APD is uh, you know, our, our, our is the judges for this process, and so we're handing cases over to them that are ready for they can administer that payment. We're also then in uh, point in charge of all the discovery disputes and related process and motions and advance any of those hearings, uh, as well as our handle like continuances on their own as well. And if they will continue to issue the orders that are issued by the judges. So the the large work that we've done over the last two years is trying to uh, make that process uniform and uh, Sort of very um, uh, sort of making sure every you know you always say it was a uniform approach to every unique appeal. So we've kind of worked with that process, making sure that process is wrote and repeatable. So now we're working on our customer outreach, trying to make sure that customers know who to reach and when to reach them based on where their appeal is in that status process. Uh, that's kind of our next mission in the next year is working on resources to do that. Introduced our staff, so I've always kept that slide. 
Next is our appeal snapshot. I always like to do a snapshot of our appeals, kind of where we've been for the last year. It's largely maintained the same. The last few years, we've maintained our ability to uh, close appeals at more or less the rate we've received them. Now, we do tend to, I know 2022 looks a little bit lower, but we do tend to close appeals for, towards the end of the year as well. Uh, this is a number that we're particularly watching to make sure any of those process changes we've initiated uh, continue to close appeals at the rate that we've been closing the previous. So that's really the number we're watching to make sure that our ability to process appeals maintains uh, unstripped. We have a total pending of over 9,000. Uh, majority of those are waiting scheduling with me in the Comptroller's office. As I said, the Division of Labor is over us and me in the office. You know, I'm actively managing over 1,000 appeals for status conferences. This is appeals that are scheduled with me in some way, shape, or form. Most of those wind up settling or withdrawing um, track of them and push them forward to make sure we're getting resolution on those cases, um, particularly some of our older appeals. And as well as our newer appeals. So we're pushing that process with every single appeal applies for the appeal to the board, everything from your mom and pops uh, who opted to go to a contested case hearing to our more sophisticated commercial appeals. And so we're working through that process as well. I'll get into a little bit on our next slide. I'll talk a little bit more about what that number, that 8,000 number really is comprised of and the breakdown of that, those numbers. This was done as of September 1st, so we've done more since then, obviously. But at the time, we had over 107 that were currently scheduled in some way, shape, or form with the hearing before the administrative law judge, that being the transfer point where we moved the appeals over from the office to Secretary Target's office. We had 44 pending uh, some sort of expedited order. Uh, and then we had our settlement, our expedited process that we had received petitions that were expediting those. We'll have about 50 pending at that second level before the assessment appeals completion. So the deep dive and kind of what comprises of that 8,000 number uh, may seem like a lot, and often uh, that you know 8,000 seems like a very large number to some extent it is. When we break it down, we'll see that those severe county timeshares make up uh, over 3,000 of that number. Davidson County and Shelby County being the other two primary uh, primary counties we have appeals with. Uh, so the vast majority of those appeals are represented by some form of council. You'll see on that on our next bullet point, um, most of our over 8,000 are represented by intelligence and agents. These are people who have trained professionals representing them who understand how to advise them on their tax implications, either paying their taxes in full or otherwise paying their dispute, their undisputed portion and trying to work through that process. So people who have essentially the resources of professionals who are know how to advise tax bills. Uh, very few of them are single family residentials, about, I think it like makes up less than about 6% of our total appeal space. So we are primarily focused on commercial. 24% uh, of our appeals are represented by one firm of being Evans and Petrie. And about 60% of all appeals are defended by really three entities, uh, Davidson County, Shelby County, which are represented by uh, Tax Council Robert Lee. So again, for our deep dive, our 3,000 number of timeshare appeals uh, is because timeshares are every individual timeshare owner has a personal item. So here at the state board, we are parcel and tax year specific. So if you have 300 owners in a timeshare complex, you might have 300 appeals for tax year you know, 2019, 2020, 2021, so forth. We've done a couple of administrative steps to consolidate those, but what the number you're seeing there is the individual file ownership interest. Consolidated, it's about 14 actual properties. So it might be individual owners in a timeshare regime, but it's about 14 individual appeals. Uh, they did have uh, some chance report litigation. I believe there was an intention to appeal to the court on that. Uh, so we do have litigation at several different levels. Spring of appeal possibilities, I guess, for tax purposes. As I said before, we're primarily commercial. The vast majority of appeals are commercial properties. We do have some residential and farm, and as well as three utilities. Like Just more of a breakdown to see kind of what kind of properties we're really addressing here. The state board of equalization, which are, which are, versus which are addressed at the local level. We also have a representation type. Uh, you know, over ninety percent 
are represented by some sort of uh, agent who's got training with the board or some sort of attorney representative who's familiar with the process as well. This next slide is particularly what I like to key in on. Uh, to the, uh, I know there's con some concern about potentiality for any sort of backlog. This number is really showing you uh, kind of what backlog, if any, exists. Uh, so the, we're tax year specific. So even though we're in currently calendar year 2022, we're usually dealing with the most previous tax year, the tax year 2021. Particularly Davis and Shelby reappraised that year. So you'll see that our 2021 appeal is where most of that number is. We do have some appeals going back through. Um, if you look at the 2019, for example, 450 of the, sorry, excuse me, 2020, over 450 or more of those timeshare properties earlier. Over 1,000 are what you'll see in that 2019 number. So although we do have some properties going for a span of years prior, for the most part, based upon our ability to close cases, we're seeing that we're processing most things within about a year of when they were originally filed. So tax year 2021, some of those appeals didn't actually come in. Um, anyway, so this is the number where I'm um, truly focusing in for any sort of backlog and any future processing cases at the time. Getting those in, getting those out within a uh, Additionally, some of the things we'll see are audit results, so tangible personal property. They may have had an audit result for several years back. So it looks like a 2019 appeal. It's only filed in 2019. Uh, always our top 10 accounting appeals by county. I have that severe county number in here. I almost removed them because, again, it's about 14 actual properties. Uh, but for transparency purposes, I uh, included them because we are that parcel tax or specific um, aspect to it. And then you can see there's a pretty significant drop once we go from Shelby over to Knox County. We're, we're seeing some appeals come into Knox County. They reappraised this year, uh, but we are working with them to expose them to have a plan. They're already starting to settle those cases as well. That, that's kind of our appeal snapshot with the board and our main actions that we've been working on this past year. The aim is sort of dividing the labor division between the comptroller's office and with the department's office. That labor is making sure we didn't disrupt anything and continuing to process the bill. Any other questions? So uh, yeah, appeals are never anyone's. I uh, think no one ever really likes to be there. Anyone's uh, saying that? Uh, without objection. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, please. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.